Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey now, today we're going to take a look at Yomi 2nd Edition from David Serlin and his company, Serlin Games. Now I have to say, Yomi was a game, the, the original edition of Yomi, was a game I wanted to play for a very long time, and I just never got around to it. It was just, uh, it was, it's kind of an expensive game, and there was just a lot of other things that I had on my plate at the time, but I was really excited for a second edition of it, because um, David Serlin, um, if you're not aware, with his company... He does several games that all have um, thematic ties to each other. They use the same characters from his Fantasy Strike universe. And I've enjoyed other games that he's done. The uh, Puzzle Strike game and also uh, Flash Duel, which uh, there will be a new edition of that coming out soon. Um, but he's constantly tweaking his games and constantly coming out with new editions. So I was like, well... Let me hold off on buying you, I mean, hopefully there will be another edition. And sure enough, here we are. Now, one thing I want to say is that um, you saw the big box that I had there. That's not how this, like, the normal set of this game comes. Um, I'm a, I don't know the exact details, but I think what there is, um, they kickstarted this new edition last year. Um, there's actually two boxes, each with several decks of cards in it that you can purchase separately. And then there's an extra box, the EX box or Xbox, <laughs> probably not the Xbox, probably the EX box that you can buy separately that lets you hold all these different decks together. And then there's extra decks you can buy. The grand sum total of that is that there's 20 different characters you can play as in this game with some extra optional EX cards that power them up as well. And well, I'm probably getting a little bit ahead of myself, but what this game is, it's supposed to simulate a video fighting game, essentially. Um, you are taking a deck of cards uh, representing one character that's sort of an anime style character like from Street Fighter and you're fighting against another character who has a different deck and while you, they share some similarities you each have your own different special abilities and it's essentially a complicated version of rock paper scissors with, with special stuff. It's a bit more complicated than that actually makes it sound. Don't run away. Let me go ahead and give you an overview of what the game is going to play like then we're going to come back and I'll let you know what I think. All right, the first thing I want to do is go through the 20 characters that are available for this new second edition of Yomi. Not all of them come within um, either of the, the two set boxes. Some of them are separate characters, but this is everything that is currently available. I'm just going to run through them real quick. The two that we're going to focus on in the actual overview of the gameplay are two of my favorites, probably my two favorites overall, Setsuki Hiroki and Gwen Grace on the Doomed Wanderer. So the game has really fantastic artwork. I'll just say this now before I even get to my final thoughts. So I'm just going to run through these real quick. You have Argagarg, Garg, who's like a merfolk person. You have Captain Zane, the Bloodguard anarchist. You have uh, Trok Bashar, the well-meaning beast. Oh, that's nice of him. He's well-meaning. Uh, Garrus Rook, the stone guardian. Uh, M. Persephone, the new oracle. She's cool, too. Uh, Valerie Rose, the manic priestess. Is there any kind of priestess, I ask you? Master Midori, the mentor dragon. There's a backstory to this game of people turning into dragons that I just don't know of. I'm not aware of it, but anyways. Uh, General Onimaru, the wartime strategist. Uh... Grave Stormborn, the Wind Warrior. Uh, let's see. Lum Bamboo, the Panda Person. And I gotta tell you, I just love that art. That is like one of my favorite pieces of art. Pieces of vinyl. Uh, Max Geiger, the Pristine Watchmaker. Is that Pristine? Precise Watchmaker, excuse me. So, tons of varied characters here. Sirius Quince, the Flagstone Chief Magistrate. Okay. Bureaucrat. Uh, Master Manelker, the Death Strike Dragon. See, another dragon person. Uh, Jefferson de Grey, the Ghostly Diplomat. He, I believe, is one of the extra decks you can get. Jaina Stormborn, the Phoenix Archer. Uh, Vendetta, the an Undead Assassin, who is really, really cool. Um, Bal Bas Beta, the Clockwork Guardian. And, oh, there's this artwork, sorry. Cool. And then lastly, uh, Gloria Grayson, the Hopeful Healer. Actually, I shouldn't have saved her for last. I actually like her character quite a bit as well. And uh, just so you know, if you get the, I believe you have to get the EX um, add-on box 
with the EX characters, you get a box that can hold every single one of these decks. It has a little character portraits there. Um, you have these uh, player boards, which I'm going to uh, just keep track of your health. It's a totally optional thing. You can keep track of your health however you see fit with D20s. Two D20s will do it. Or uh, 2D10s, actually, is probably even better. Or what pen and paper, however you want to do it. You also have this board as well. Um, this is the knockdown chip that uh, comes in the game. This is, this is a nice one. I think this is also a potential in the EX box. Um, and then you have all of these. I didn't even bother to take them out just because I don't really feel like going over them, but you have the EX cards. These are X cards. I don't know if it's EX or X, but um, they are essentially super powerful versions of the other character cards if you want to just have a way over the top game or if you want to give one player a serious advantage over another player like a handicap sort of thing but it's otherwise the game doesn't really change the game drastically then you have this death strike dragon master manelker if you want to do like um a one versus all type dealie so with all that stuff out of the way let's get to how the game actually plays all right, let me run you through the basics of Yomi. Now, there are different gameplay modes. You can do a tag team mode, you can do a three on three, you can do a, like a two on one type match where one character is super powerful. I'm not really gonna get into all of that. I mean, the basic gameplay is gonna be the same. There's just like a lot of different add-ons and things that you do, uh, just little tweaks to the rules. I just wanna teach you the basics of this. So like I said um, in a little bit before this, I'm focusing on Satsuki and, um, I'm forgetting, Gwen. I keep getting Gwen and Gloria confused. Um, so Satsuki and Gwen here, we have her decks. You're going to start with seven cards each uh, from each deck. You're going to have your character card and a couple of cheat sheets. One of these sheets, uh, one of these cards tells you every single card that's in your deck and you're supposed to let your opponent see that if they want. One of them is just telling you the turn structure. Your character card is actually going to tell you uh, your starting health, which you're going to keep track of over on that board over there. And it also tells you uh, your max combo rating and uh, your special ability. So Satsuki's ability here says that if she starts to draw a phase with one or zero cards in her hand, she gets to draw five cards instead of just drawing one as the normal rules. And you may hit back with a full combo if you dodge an attack or joker this turn. So there's that. That'll all make a little more sense in a minute. Um, Gwen here, the Doomed Wanderer, she starts off with more life points. She has 85 of them, and she has two uh, different things here. Shadow Plague, during the draw phase, you draw an extra card and take two damage. Uh, magic players should know that you should uh, that never worry about losing life to draw more cards. Uh, <laughs> and then Relentless Strikes, whenever the opponent would normal block your non-ender attack, you may discard a card, uh, a red and a black normal attack. If you do, the black one hits, you win combat, and it ends. The opponent's block is discarded, and they draw a card. So that probably made no sense whatsoever, but I'll run through the game, don't worry. So the obvious goal here is to knock your opponent down to zero life points, just like in any fighting game. Um, how you're gonna do that is through a sort of complicated version of rock, paper, scissors. But wait, 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 don't stop watching. It, it is good, don't worry. Um, how this works is that you have attacks, throws, and then block slash dodge. And I put block and dodge together because even though they are different, they, in the rock, paper, scissors scheme, they're sort of lumps together. So essentially how it works is that attacks are always gonna beat throws. And throws are always gonna beat blocks and dodges. But blocks and dodges are always going to beat attack. Okay, so that's the sort of rock, paper, scissors scenario that's going on in Yomi. But every card does something a little bit different. You can combo cards together very specifically. And there are also special abilities that are unique to every single character, not just on their character card, but also within certain cards in their deck. Now I'm gonna go through some of the cards, like Gwen's cards I'll go over in detail, and then I'll show you some of Satsuki's as well, just to give you a taste of what's on there. But let me explain how the core gameplay is gonna work from turn to turn. Um, at the start of every turn after the first, you're gonna draw an additional card from your deck. Cards can actually be kind of hard to come by in this game. You have to make judicious uses of things like blocks in order to recharge an extra card to your hand, or character special abilities like Satsuki's in order to do that. Uh, but when uh, you get to a new turn of gameplay, each player is gonna take one card from their hand hands and that is going to be your sort of battling card for this turn. Then you're going to flip over simultaneously and resolve it. Now what you're looking for here, and by the way I just took random cards so just ignore what those happen to be. Um, 
What you're looking for here, like I described it as rock, paper, scissors, um, an attack is always going to be a throw. So if I played an attack and my opponent played a throw, then I would immediately get the upper hand and I would be able to deal my damage and potentially play more cards in a combo. You can link cards together and I'll explain in a moment more about that. Now, if I happen to play an attack and my opponent played an attack at the same time, which in this particular example we did, then it goes by speed, which I'll illustrate on the card in a moment. Whoever has the lowest speed is going to get to do their attack first and then potentially do more combos as well. If we were to play a throw, however, the throws beat blocks and dodges and also slower throws. Blocks are a way, like I said, for you to get extra cards. If you successfully block an attack, uh, block speed attacks, then you're going to be able to draw a card to your hand. However, if you're thrown, and oh, and by the way, you get to keep your block card. So if I blocked, I get to draw a card, and I get to keep, to keep my block card. However, if I get thrown, because thrown beats block, then I have to discard that card, and I don't get my extra card. It is also worth noting as well that even if you, some attacks are so powerful that they all actually deal damage if they get through a block. Like this one here actually has a little one shield underneath it. That means that even if you block, you still get dealt one damage. Lastly, I can always choose to dodge, and the way that dodge is going to work, it beats attack, as we said before, and uh, fail, loses out to throw, and if you dodge an attack successfully, then you get to do a counterattack. You get to play another attack card from your hand in order to hit your opponent, although it is treated as an ender. So what do all those little details mean? Well, let me show you some of the cards from at least one of the decks and go over the different terminology. So let me show you some of the cards. We're going to go ahead and start with Gwen's cards. A lot of the cards are very, very similar to each other or exactly the same, um, but I'll just give you a taste of them. So first off, all the cards are going to be double-edged, and whenever you're playing one of the cards, you're going to uh, play it so that the edge that you want to um, be inflicted upon your opponent is facing towards them. I'll get back to that in a moment, but I just want to give you what the cards look like. So yes, they do have traditional card suits on them. Um, so you could theoretically play these as normal decks of playing cards, but I am going to bet that less than point. 5% of the people that have ever played Yomi have ever used it for that, um, but uh, prove me wrong. Uh, <laughs> but they do serve a purpose within the game. Some combos will reference um, specific numbers, and you can also trade in pairs of cards to search your deck for aces, which are like the most powerful cards in the game. Or not like, they are. Um, so let's go through what the different things are here. So first off, there's a tiny little arrow. Let me see if I can even get in a little bit further than that. That tiny little arrow just references what's on the other side of the card so that you don't have to like be constantly going like this in your hand. It's just a really quick little reminder there. Um, then you have the speed of the blow. Lower is better. The lower the speed, the faster it is, and you get to inflict your damage first, which could mean life or death in this game, literally, within the character. The the world of the game. <laughs> uh, this is how many combo points it takes to use this card. Remember that I mentioned on the character cards, there's a little combo meter here. That's how many points you have to spend on combos in your turn. You cannot breach past that limit. Um, so it's very important that you keep track of how much each of the individual cards you're going to use um, sucks up those points on a given round. Um, then you have different types of cards. There's starter, linker, ender, and can't combo cards. Starter cards must always start a combo. That's obvious enough. Enders must always end it. Linkers can kind of like float between all the different um, uh, types of cards. And can't combo is both like a starter and an ender. It's just, it's there. It's a big lump that does a really powerful ability. And then that's that. And then that little icon there is the knockdown, which means that if this is the last card that you use in a combo or that you just choose to use, it's going to knock down your opponent, which means that they, I believe, I'm trying to break my memory here, it's they can't dodge on their next turn and they're subject to mix up normals, which are like, uh, they can block, but they can't block um, like odd blocks, can't block um, even attacks and things like that. It's a little more complicated. It's a little complicated, but don't worry too much about it. Um, under here is just a reminder of what the ability does. So this says combos into any normal attack, linker or ender. Knocks down if this ends your combo, just like I said. It's just a reminder for people who are kind of new to the game. And this is how much damage it does. There, it, now, this will be a different type of symbol depending on whether it's an attack or a throw, but it's just reminding you what type of attack it is. So here's an example of another attack and you see it doesn't have nearly as much stuff up there as other cards it does less damage um, here's an example of a block which is very simply uh, when you block an attack 
uh, or a joker. We'll get to that in a minute. You draw a card. Return this to your hand unless you were thrown or hit with a knockdown mix-up. All right, so that's an example of what would happen if you blocked. So let me show you something else here. Here is a dodge card. Um, one of the other ones was as well. When you dodge an attack or a joker, you may hit back with any single attack or throw. It becomes an ender. So you see, it's, it is rock, paper, scissors in a way, but there's more to it than that. So just uh, to be aware, let me show you some other things, some cool artwork and such. Let's get into the special abilities that some of the cards have. You have cards like Gloria's Remedy for Gwen here, uh, which is that when you block an attack or joker with this card, you take no block damage, discard this card, and don't draw a card from blocking, gain six life, which can be very, very powerful. Uh, then here is the, like, the really powerful cards, the Jack, King, Queen, Ace, and the Joker. Uh, with the now up here, this is if you pump up, this number up here is the damage, plus if you pump up the card by discarding extra cards as indicated in the green box, which in this case is um, additional, just throwing out an additional card, you're going to get to pump up the uh, damage on this if you hit. Then you still have your speed, your combos, starter, and so on. And then the special ability here, which is the Chill Bane. When you hit with Chains of Ice, freeze the opponent. They skip all decisions they would make the rest of the turn. Next turn, their attacks are throws. Uh, attacks and throws are two speed lower, so it can seriously be debilitating. And I'm just going to run through the rest of these. I'm not going to rattle off every single little bit of these cards, but I do like showing off the artwork because it's really cool. And notice that these are still double sided, so they still have different things on each side. Uh, that, that one might be the same, actually. <laughs> Bad example. But here's the, the ace card. By the way, these are like foils. I don't know if these were only in the Kickstarter version or not. I actually don't know the answer to that. But you can, the, either way, the normal game comes with the same exact card. It's just not foil. <laughs> uh, Dreadlands Portal on one side of this. See how much damage that does? It's tremendous, but it is also a can't combo card. And it's probably slower than a lot of attacks that uh, your opponent's going to be forced to um, defend against. Uh, whatever I just said. <laughs> when you play this move, discard... Uh, two more aces so you see there's a little tiny symbols for aces there that's because you have to play this ace and then an additional two aces so if it says three aces it's this card plus two other ones it counts as itself and then finally every player has a couple of jokers in their deck the joker is basically a defensive measure you have a it's the gold burst, uh, both it beats attacks and throws. On a hit, you search for up to two aces, and then rewind time. You play a face down joker to avoid further damage, or a bluff card, draw two cards if you avoid damage. Here, I'll show you some of way. the uh, Satsuki's artwork and cards as well. She has all of her own special abilities, like bag of tricks. If this is your only card in hand, put up to three non-joker cards from your discard pile on top of your deck in any order, and then discard this card. She has a lot of upside down cards just because I put them in there like that. <laughs> so every character is distinct in what they can do. Um, and Satsuki is really an expert at being incredibly fast. That's her big thing. So every character is different and distinct. Um, battles are fast. Battles are furious. You're linking cards together in order to totally dominate your opponent and knock them down to zero life points. That is Yomi. Now, let's get to my final thoughts. Well, first and foremost, look, if you know anything about me and my channel, you know that I'm sucker for anime or video game style artwork, and the artwork in Yomi is phenomenal, just fantastic. Some of it is probably better than others, but even like the like quote unquote worst art in this set is awesome. And it's better than like, and most other artwork I've seen in a lot of other board games. When it's good, it's really good. And I really love the graphic design and the style of the cards, the box. Everything just looks really, really slick. Now, I in my intro, I touched on the fact that you have to buy this game in like different sets. And there's extra decks that you have to buy. That's a bit weird for me. In a sense, it almost feels like you're chasing like a living card game at a certain point. And I can understand why they have to do it that way because, I mean, the original Yomi was all in one box. I think you could buy some extra stuff, but for the most part, the majority of the decks were all in one set. And it was quite expensive. That's one of the reasons why I didn't get it sooner. So I understand splitting it up and putting it into more digestible chunks. But it, it does mean that you, if you really want everything, you're going to have to make multiple different purchases. But 
I am happy to say that if you are willing to do that, you will not be disappointed. I had a ton of fun with this game. I was actually fearing that my hopes and expectations were a bit too high after all this time, and having played other similar games, which I will touch on in a minute, I know that's the 800 pound gorilla in the room, but um, having played similar games, maybe I wouldn't appreciate the game as much as I would have, say, three or four years ago. But really, I had a ton of fun with this, and it wasn't just based aesthetically off of what the game looks like. When I describe, whenever I, I describe this to multiple people, and whenever I describe this to them as like complicated rock, paper, scissors, they're like, oh, come on, really? And I even know a person who would be really pre-inclined to like this kind of game, but hates that whole mechanism of it. But it's really much more than that. It is purely trying to read your opponent based off of their past actions, what you think they're most likely to do, the amount of cards that they have in hand. It's trying to outwit your opponent. I don't always like that. Um, it, there's other games that I've played where there's it's just kind of like you're just trying to get into your opponent's head and that just feels a little bit too dry for me. I prefer to react tactically to things going out on like a board with miniatures and things like that. But it works very, very well in Yomi. And I think the main reason for that is because it is so fast. This game is just like, do, 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 do. I mean, you're just playing cards really, really quickly. And if you really get into it, once you get the rules under, under your belt and there are some quirky things and that kind of made it difficult to explain on camera during my overview just because there are like mix up normals and there's knockdown and there are all these little details but overall the game is simple and fast and that is to its credit while at the same time a skilled player will destroy and I know this from experience me being destroyed a skilled player will destroy a less skilled player that's just the way it is and that makes um the extra cards, like the EX cards. I still don't know whether I'm supposed to be saying X or EX, whatever. Um, it makes those cards valuable when you need to give someone a handicap, or if you just wanna play with new cards or just like super overpowered, that's a cool thing. But you don't need to do any of the extra game modes to get the most out of this game. Those are fun things. I haven't really dabbled in them too much. I did the um, two versus one thing and that was cool. Um, but just as a two player straight up game, there's a lot here and it's very, very cool. Um, you know, one of the common complaints about this, I don't know why it's a complaint, is that you the cards have the uh, the typical card suits on them, like that you can play it as a normal deck of cards. As I joked about in my overview, there's no one that's ever gonna do that. But still, I don't care that they're there. It's not a complaint. Um, the simplicity of the game, I suppose, can be a fault um, for people that want something more complex, but again, the speed of this and the, you know, it can be a filler weight and filler time style of game, but with so much, you know, strategy and just like hidden depth to it, that it kind of rises above that. And I don't know, I'm kind of head over heels for this game. I just really, really enjoy it. So let's talk about, I mentioned the 800 pound gorilla in the room, and that is Battlecon Devastation of Midnight's. A game which you probably, it's, it's down there somewhere. You can it's off camera, I think. Um, or maybe it's somewhere over there. I like Battlecon a lot. I really do. I got everything for Devastation. I have the original war, and I love the theme in that. It almost completely uh, the same as far as theme. And the character designs of both the anime style artwork. Okay, I do enjoy them both. The thing about Battlecon is, and why it hasn't been hitting the table much for me, is that uh, just like Yomi, it's only two player. And it's hard for me to get two player games to the table, but I can usually do so when I'm killing time in between people showing up or people who are clearing out at the end and I just, one other person says, I'll stay for a little bit longer, things like that. Battlecon is tough to get to the table then because a match can last a long time. Battlecon is, while not overly complex, it is far more complex. And while I think that's a benefit in some ways, that you're putting together these card combinations and you actually have a board where you're manipulating pieces and moving around, that's all really neat and that's a great game. But for what I'm looking for in a quick two-player game, Yomi just blows it out of the water. If I was gonna do a point by point comparison, which I don't know, maybe I'll do someday, there's gonna be pluses and minuses on both sides. As a more gamey game, <laughs> which just sounds funny, and for pure sheer variety of stuff, I think Battlecon wins. But for what I want out of this type of game, Yomi really excels at that, I think, more. It's just putting together these different card combinations and, you know, analyzing the speed, trying to read your opponent and just putting the, the feel of chaining together combos 
just gives me so much more of a fighting game feel. And it's like it's the kind of game that makes you want to yell out phrases like ha I use my you know blowing reversal or whatever it's called blowing reversal is probably not called that uh, <laughs> so it just kind of brings that out of you so I really enjoyed it it, it is kind of an expensive game it, it's kind of a luxury kind of board game but if you get access to it if you want to buy just one of the sets I think it's well worth it you'll have a lot of fun you'll probably want to buy everything that is Yomi second edition from Serlin Games I highly recommend it Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com.